I'm going to try to explain how my wiring is done preliminary here on my uh, upgraded machine. So um, I'm going to take you first through the uh, the power, the 110, uh, the regular power, and then I'm going to take you through the indicator light second. Uh, first of all, I have a uh, I replaced this plug. This is a uh, industrial hospital plug. Um, and it has a little light inside here that when it's green so that's it shows me that I'm getting power to the circuit so the breaker in the panel which is over here in my case is on um, and this is an American wiring system 110 volts so polarity is maintained and in most European systems the polarity is not maintained it's actually a reverse or you can actually reverse it so this plug this is the ground plug it could be turned around and go back into uh, most European systems and po polarity is not maintained in the hot and the neutral would be reversed the American system are going to only go in one way polarity is maintained and so we have on this one we have a hot over here it's a black wire and uh, we have a, a neutral over here which is the negative wire and then we uh, which is white and then we have a green wire coming in which is the equipment ground okay so that's just, this is where it first starts and I put a little extra long cord on because I use mine away from the power outlet and so it, the power comes in here and goes to this connecting block and as you can see there is uh, the black which is the hot the white is the neutral and the green is the equipment ground so let's do the equipment ground first on the other side here the connecting block and I maintain this uh, connecting block system and uh, that was with the gen threes the millenniums um, and so um, the neutral or the hot or the ground comes down and it goes underneath this connecting block and it connects here so that the base is grounded and then there's a second wire that comes out and goes underneath and comes over and around and to the element and the boiler which grounds the boiler you may notice on most of these systems because we have in here we have a gasket you can see it's a gray gasket I used a larger one on the bottom and the smaller one on the top there is not um, the equipment ground is not necessarily maintained between the base and the boiler unless you have a separate ground here so a lot of the systems that have grounds on them they ground the base but they forget to ground the boiler or they ground the boiler and forget to ground the base and uh, Bong actually did some experiments on this one figured out and so let's follow the wiring since it is important to remember the hot in the US system is maintained uh, polarity is maintained so the black wire comes in here and it goes all the way around and it comes to the thermal fuse first the thermal fuse is here as you can see if this thing pops then all the all the power to the whole machine is off doesn't you don't necessarily have to wire it this way I've been wanting to do it this kind of acts like a breaker a thermal breaker a thermal fuse so that if this pops all the machine is has no hot to it except obviously through the connecting block here but it gets shut off at this point coming off it goes to the switch I put in a different kind of switch here because I've got I've got two things going on the first thing I have going on is on position one is what it takes to pull a shot on two on the second position of the switch um, it will be a super steam it will be a override of the pressure stat uh, and it will allow the uh, boiler to get hotter and you'll have more steam so this is a single throw I mean a double throw double pull switch there are two poles one one and two you can see this is the neutral the black is on the bottom and um, so that's the the poles and the throws is we have one here we have off in the middle and uh, all, and the second positions here much like a gen 2 okay so we're all kind of familiar with that one and so the hot comes into the switch uh, and then when you throw on the first position which is what you used to use the pressure stat and to pull the shots this is adjustable pressure stat that I put in a new from um, uh, Stefano most of them are adjustable I was replacing the thermo uh, pressure stat because uh, I replaced the element because I had a little bit of damage on it that I noticed and I didn't want to put it back in with it damaged so the hot comes in here it goes obviously to 
the first side, so it comes out of here and it goes to the pressure stat. The pressure stat at this, you know, when it kicks on, um, the hot co it comes out and it runs all the way around and powers the element. So that's the hot side of the element. Uh, the neutral side of the element goes back to um, the side of the switch on the first position and then it goes to the common of the neutral and that runs all the way back to the, co the connecting block. So I didn't have to really do a double pole switch. Uh, I did it because I, I could, but and really all I need, because I've got it this way and polarity is maintained, I really don't need to switch the neutrals on this, but I have it, so I used it and I wired it that way. It makes it a little bit more complicated, but not that really that bad. Okay, so that's really what happens with the pressure stat. It's just like a normal, you turn it on, you know, just like you would on a normal machine. The, the difference comes when I have now this second position here, which is the super steam, the override, um, temperature override. So uh, I put in here, uh, per Bong's instructions, I put in 120 degree Celsius uh, uh, pressure um, um, thermal switch. Okay, so what happens is when you turn it to two, the power now comes out and it goes into the thermal switch and then when the thermal switch is on, it goes out into the element. And then it comes off the neutral the same way and comes to here, goes to the common, and then goes back to the connecting block. So I just really added a one circuitry for the super steam with this thermal switch here, this 120 degree, degree Celsius thermal switch. So it's kind of cool. So I'll be able to get this is from Bong's experiment. I can get a different switch here and the like, a different ratings, but I'm using this one first. And I just attached it to, I don't know if you can see this or not, I just attached it to pull, uh, this um, stud here where the normal thermal uh, fuse goes. I ran a second one off of here. And I do have another video on that, that installation. So that's really all there is to it. That's, uh, there's just an override circuitry for uh, super steam. So we'll see how that works. Where this gets a little bit more complicated, there's a lot of wires in here and I probably I didn't need to do this, but I did it because I could and it's a lot of fun and it will let me see what's going on inside my machine. I added six indicator lights on the front panel. You can see them the back side of them here. I'll show you the front side later. Um, and they're fairly easy to do. I had to use uh, uh, a, a hundred rheostat or um, rheostat for it to not rheostat but uh, resistor on them, and each one of these has a resistor on it because I was going to 110 volts, and you can use these um, these LEDs for different voltages. I used 110, so I was able to, and so each one of these, except this last one here, which I'll explain in a minute. Five of these have. Um, resistors on them and so I had to do a lot of soldering and like and uh, I can show a video on how that takes place but it's really kind of easy uh, the six indicator lights and we'll, we'll kind of point to them on the inside here this is a white one and this is a green one a red one you can see the red I actually color coded them a green one on the bottom a blue one here a yellow one here and another white one here and let me tell you what they indicate this first one this first white one here indicates it goes to the middle of the power here it indicates that this thermal um, fuse is working that it's the power is getting through that so this white light should be on at all times when this is working so this light will be on 24 7. Um, as the same way that this is on 24 7 this just gives me another little indicator down the down the line of the wiring that that's working and then when you turn it to the first position, the, the green light will come on, which is the one down here. And uh, that will indicate that it's in the first position, just like a regular Gen 3. So I used the green to do that. The red will come on when you switch it to the second position. So these, all these lights here, this one will be on all the time. This will be on when you have it on one. This will be on when you have it on two. Kind of fun, kind of easy. And then on the back side here, I, these are more indicator lights that kind of tell you what are going on. The uh, blue one 
is um, actually this is usually yellow first, which is on the top of the base, which this is upside down. Yellow will come on when the pressure set is wired, is hot. So it's when it has electri electricity through it, it's passing through it. The blue one will come on when the thermal switch is on, when the super steam is on. This white one will come on, and it's not the normal LED because it has this uh, sensor of power. This is, uh, again, through Bong and a, 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 another individual who helped us. I can't remember his name at the moment. This actually has a coil here that senses power on the back side of the element. So the, this white light will come on whenever the element is on. So in practicality, this is how it should work. There should probably be... Uh, four set four lights on uh, different lights when the pressure stat is on when you're pulling shots versus uh, position one versus position two when the thermal switch is on so the white one is like I said is always on when you're pulling a shot the green one will come on because I just turned it to one when the pressure stat is on the yellow light will come on so the yellow lights on and also, the element will light up this white one because they're going to power through the element. So those four lights will be on and they kind of pass through this loop. When you switch it to second position, the, uh, this red light will come on. The white light again will be on because it's the thermal fuse is still on. Uh, the blue light will come on when, water, when, when electricity passes through the thermal switch. And the white one will come on also at the same time as the blue one because you should be having uh, electricity pass through the element. If the element is not working on for either the uh, for either the first position or second position, this white light won't come on. So, and when you're steaming, it should be a white light to indicate you got power through the switch. Red indicating the second position. Blue indicating the thermal switch is on and white is indicating the element is on. When the thermal switch shuts off, the blue and white will shut off. Just like when in the first position, when the thermo when the pressure set shuts off, the yellow and the white will shut off. And only these side will be lit when it's really the element is not on and the machine is is kind of in ready position. So it's not that complicated, but it looks like it is. These white wires are all the neutrals that come off of the LEDs and they come to just one um, to the center neutral here on the switch. That's where I pulled the neutral off so I could power all the LEDs. Otherwise, each one of these, and they're color coded like the white here, you know, it goes to um, this uh, sensor, the power sensor here on the back side of the element. So that's important to note is that all of these LEDs are on the back side of whatever they're monitoring. So uh, the white one here is on the back side, which is really, I grabbed it here. I could have grabbed it here, but that was a little bit too complicated. So that's when the thermal fuse is working, that they grabbed, they grabbed it on the back side of here. When the back side of the pressure stat is, is um, um, I mean, the back side of the switch, this red one is here for, uh, for second position. The green is here for the for the uh, first position. The blue is for the uh, thermal uh, switch, uh, the override super steam, which is here. And the yellow is for the pressure stat, which is on the back side of the pressure stat here. So it indicates when there's power going through. As I said, the white one here indicates the neutral side of the, of the uh, element to show that there's power passing through the element. Initially, I put it here, but then I said, well, that'll be on every time. Uh, that these turn on and that won't really tell me that the element has power passing through it as remember polarity is maintained in a US system so I can do all these things and they work out really cool uh, because of the polarity and being maintained that's kind of the whole system I um, uh, hope you enjoyed it um, thanks for listening